No one is coming to save us. I can only talk about in depth of what I see in the politics here in America. I don't know if you think our old president was crazy or our new one's crazy. I don't care. That's your choice. But do you think there is any politician here in America or anywhere in the world that's gonna come wave a magic wand and make everything perfect for us? Is anybody coming to save us? Can we just say it like it is? Pay off our debt, make things better, things will go easy, no more inflation, money's fine, my debt's gone. No one is coming. And politicians have evolved to be politicians. The only way things get better is if we take complete ownership. Listen, don't wait for permission for your husband, from your husband, from your parents, from your children, from anyone. Remember, God gave it to you, not them. The universe gave it to you, not them. You see, I really believe sometimes our subconscious is really powerful. It's like this powerhouse computer. And when things don't go right, it says, it's not your fault, your husband's not all in with you. It's not your fault, you see how crazy our president is or how crazy our president was. It's not your fault, inflation is here. It's not your fault, we have COVID. It's not your fault, we have shutdowns. And all I know is if you have a millimeter, a crumb of you saying, I could do this, but. If there's any but, that means you're not taking complete ownership, even if someone else let you down, even if the partner robbed you all, all your money, even if your spouse cheated on you. I get that. And you could, a lot of you are here for a lot of different reasons, money, health, life, passion. What if you just took complete ownership? I chose this schlub that was unfaithful to me, right? I made this mistake, I waited too long, I accepted this. I'm not saying it's right, but here's what I wanna tell you. When you decide that it's all on you, oh my God, it's so liberating. Because then it's all on you. If it wins, that's you. If it doesn't win, that's you. What if we decided to take ownership of all of it? What do you think is the most costly advice in the world? It's your broke friend telling you how to get rich. It's your single friend telling you what you should do with your relationship. We are letting unqualified people tell us where our future should be. And the way I look at it is, I don't want anybody steering my ship. If something pops in your head and go, damn, I'm letting him, I'm letting her, I'm letting that thought steer my ship. Listen, at the end of our lives, let's just, again, I, I digress a little bit but I want to anchor each one of these things. At the end of our lives, if you have the chance to meet with God, meet with your maker, whatever you believe that is, do you want to give excuses on why it didn't work because you listened to other people? My mom said that wouldn't work. My husband thought that was a crazy idea. My cousin Diane said that you know you need money to make money or that men are evil and once they cheat, every man cheats or every man's bad. Like, I don't know what that is, but would you... Would you hate to be at the end of your life and realize that you missed out on love? You missed out on connection? Missed out on that business? Because you took bad advice? I always think about this. I, I do these little tricks that maybe you think are mean. But I always think of if you met your maker at the end of your life, and imagine if God pulled out his iPhone, because of course he's got an iPhone. Imagine God pulled out his iPhone and played you a video of the woman or man you could have been. Think about that one for a minute. Imagine seeing the three minute high re highlight reel of the love you could have had, the health you could have enjoyed, the impact you could have made on the world. Man, I think about that and it just freaking like, hell no, it's go time. And, and will we fail? Of course, but I would so ma much rather be on the field playing and failing than being in the sidelines wearing someone else's jersey on the back of my shirt. I am not putting out someone else's name on my jersey. It's Graziosi on the back and I'm in the game and that's in the game of life. So be careful who you get advice from. What communities are you a part of? Just watch who you surround yourself with. And if you have certain people that bring you down, then you gotta find a way to either spend less time with them or be Teflon. Hear me on that. You must. Who we surround ourselves is who we become. That's not my saying. It's been around since the beginning of time. It's a fact. So who will you listen to, learn from, and who will you be persuaded by? Find those that are living life where you want to live and model it. Listen, I'm not talking, listen, today, I'm sharing what I've learned over 30 years of going after it. I've failed miserably. I've had an ulcer in my life. I went through a divorce. 
I've had panic attacks. I've had anxiety attacks. I went broke once, all the way down to nothing. Had to sell the house I was living in. But I've also found real love in my life. I don't, if, if you guys follow me on Instagram, my wife and I don't have an Instagram relationship. I'm married to the love of my life. I fall more in love every day. My wife's here today. When she came in today, I, I see her. It's five years we've been together. I, she walks in a room, I feel like I'm 12 years old and I'm in love with my best friend. I love being a dad. I, I, I live in the house of my dreams. I get to fly on my own plane. I get to do all this cool stuff. I have 15 different companies. But, and, and last year we fed seven million people through Feeding America. Last year we built two uh, schools in Africa. Last year I donated $600,000 of my own money to help kids in slavery through Operation Underground Railroad. And that's only some of the things we've done. I don't say that to brag. I say that because that was a kid who lived in a trailer park who lived in a bathroom with his dad, who didn't go past high school, who got made fun of, who had parents who struggled terribly. I'm not saying, look what I've done, magic. I'm just saying what's possible when you shift the outcome, when you decide to follow people who've already done it. Model people that, if you wanna play great tennis, I don't care if your Aunt Edna watched every tennis match for the last 40 years, if she's never played, never won, never failed, you can't take advice from Aunt Edna. You could give her a kiss and bring her some flowers and go find someone who used to play tennis or plays tennis better than you and let them raise your bar, raise your bar. Raise your standards, raise what you're willing to accept for yourself and for your family. And whatever area you're trying to improve, this isn't just about money, it's about any area. Raise your standards. Raise your standards in your relationship. Raise your standards for your health. Raise your standards for your impact, your income, your career. If you expect more for your, from yourself than anybody else would expect, life will change. We are in a really tough time in the world. Even if you're in a career and you're in a job that you like or you're gonna start a business or you're in a business, this is a time when people are uncertain, we must serve more, give more. If you have a product, make it better. If you do customer support, improve the customer support. I'm telling you in times like this, the winners are the people that create. Now I want you to hear the difference. What companies will go out of business are companies that are based on transactions only. Companies that'll go out of business are based on transactions only compared to based on relationships. Be a relationship business owner. Be a relationship marketer. Be in relationship when you sell. No matter what your product is, no matter what your service is, when you are a relationship focused company or individual in your company and you wanna raise, go up the ladder of your career, when you focus on relationships, when you focus on listening to others, understanding where people are rather than just transactional, things change forever. Michael Gerber's book ages ago, I remember, and I'm gonna paraphrase, I read that book a decade or more ago is I remember saying, do you know what the difference between doctors being sued and not for malpractice? Anybody remember that in Michael Gerber's book? It was ages ago I read it. You know what the difference was? Eight minutes. Doctors who spent 10 minutes or less with a client were way more likely to be sued than doctors who spent 18 minutes or more. The only determining factor was a relationship because they come into your room Doctor comes in, if you're a relationship, how you doing? You're not feeling so good, you got a temperature? Oh, I think it's, I think it's this, that, and the other thing. Okay, take care and you're out. That's just a guy. Another guy comes in, oh my God, Isabel, how's your daughter doing? Did she, she went off to college, right? Oh, that's good, she, did, she like in college, great. And they have a communication, 18 minutes compared to 10 is the difference between a malpractice lawsuit or not. So, if you're in business, have a career, want to expand, this is the year to serve more, love more, go deeper. I can only talk about in depth of what I see in the politics here in America. I don't know if you think our old president was crazy or our new one's crazy. I don't care. That's your choice. But do you think there is any politician here in America or anywhere in the world that's going to come wave a magic wand and make everything perfect for us? No one is coming to save us. Mm -hmm.